Well, I think we'll uh, get started. So welcome everybody to today's webinar uh, with Quantum and also um, Vision Australia on introducing the Blind Shell Classic 2, the perfect for phone for the vision impaired. And today uh, we've presenting, we've got Rob Drummond, who's um, here in Sydney at Quantum Reading Learning Vision. We've got David Woodbridge from Vision Australia, who's on the technology experts there. And we also have Michael Palmer on the Gold Coast in uh, Queensland, who's also one of our uh, quantum consultants. So, um, and I'm Rebecca Clark, and I'm also based here in Sydney. So um, just a little bit of housekeeping to, oh, first of all, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from the, which this webinar is being presented and pay our respects to any elders past, present or emerging. And for us, I think it's the Dara gland um, here in Sydney, but feel free to put it in the chat if you're in Australia and you know whose lands you're on. Um, right, and so just a bit of housekeeping for those who might not have joined one of our webinars before. Your microphone will be muted during the webinar, but we will have time for questions at the end. And if you do have any questions, please put them either in the Q&A uh, area, which you'll find on the toolbar in Zoom, or in the chat. Uh, for keyboard users, you can use Alt and H if you're on a PC, or I believe Command and K, and I'm sure David will correct me if I'm wrong on that on a Mac, to get to, to that. And if you've got any technical difficulties, please also use that. And the webinar is being recorded, and the um, that will be made available afterwards uh, via our YouTube, so. Command H on the Mac. So Command H, sorry. There you yeah, go, that's okay, apologies. no problem. Yeah. Close enough, one key off. <laughs> um, so a bit of an overview for today. Um, first of all, uh, Rob Drummond will give us a bit of an introduction to the blind shell as to what it actually is. Um, Michael Palmer will give us a description, physical description of the device and talk about some of the low vision tools that are available on it. Uh, then David Woodbridge is going to give us a demonstration of different features and talk about, uh, compare it with some of the other options that are out there like iPhones and Android. And then Michael will also go through some of the accessories that are available and then we'll have time for Q&A and we should go for about around an hour. So um, yeah, without further ado, I shall hand over to Rob. Great, thanks Beck, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, yeah, so introducing the, the Blind Shell Classic 2, um, and the number two there uh, sort of infers that there was an earlier version, and there certainly was, but it uh, wasn't compatible with our radio frequencies in Australia, and uh, we couldn't bring it in, but it, it was available, and we've been in touch with these guys for uh, for several years and waiting for the development of the Australian ready model. So uh, the Blind Shell Classic 2 is uh, the model that works here in Australia and also New Zealand. Um, so I guess one of the questions, um, you know, we get uh, quite often, okay, it's a phone, um, you know, by the messaging that we send out there, we say that it's for uh, the vision impaired. Um, but what what is it? You know, what does it actually do that that's different? And I'm not going to steal all of Mike's thunder. He's he's got uh, everything in store for you there. But I might answer that question um, by answering the questions that we get. And one of those questions we get is, who can use the phone? Um, and the really short answer is pretty much anyone. Um, anyone, and that just depends on the person's requirements. So there's a variety of people using it uh, so far. We've uh, been supplying it here in Australia, uh, certainly all of this year. And uh, you know, so far it goes across uh, a very broad age range. It also goes ac across a very broad technical skill level. So some people are using the phone um, in, you know, by itself, uh, just with the features uh, that they want to use on the phone. Um, some people are using it as well as a regular smartphone. Uh, David might touch on some of those issues a little bit later. Uh, some people are using it just as a phone. Um, it gives voice feedback and just makes using the phone easier because it's giving you confirmation 
of what you're doing with the phone, which buttons you're pressing, the function that you're selecting, etc. cetera. Um, but some are using it to browse the internet, send text messages, uh, listen to talking books, um, listen to the radio. Um, you know, the phone is there with a list of features and uh, like any other phone, you can just pick and choose the features that are, are useful to use. Um, the other uh, thing I guess is uh, people say, oh, how easy is it to use? Um, well, that's really its function. Um, you know, it's got a whole bunch of uh, things that it can do for you, but it's, its main uh, goal is to make phone use easy. Um, and that's one of the things that people have uh, commented to us. Uh, it's easy to learn. Um, it's quick to adapt to, particularly if you have been used to using some sort of mobile phone in the past. Um, and it's very quick to make calls. Um, some of the things that people have uh, told us that they like about it is uh, uh, easy adaption. Um, you know, moving from one phone to the blind shell has been quite easy and seamless for them. Uh, they like the, the, the real and tactile keypad. Um, so on a smartphone, you've just got a glass screen to uh, try and select the um, you know, various buttons and icons, etc. But this one you all do by a keypad and all those buttons are very tactile. Um, the screen uh, that's on it is not a touch screen. Uh, so, I mean, you can touch it, but it's not gonna uh, do anything for you. Um, in terms of um, what you see on the screen, if, you've, if you're familiar with an electronic magnifier where you can vary the size of the print and the contrasts, you still have that capability uh, with the blind shell. You can adjust those things to suit your vision. Uh, likewise though, um, if you don't have any functional vision, then uh, you can still use the phone because it's giving you that voice feedback uh, with all of your actions that you um, it gives to the phone. Um, it's got an inbuilt torch, so that can be handy for people. Uh, it's got one button dialing, which is handy for pretty much everyone, I would suggest. Um, but something else that's a little bit different, it's actually got an FM radio receiver built into it. So uh, you just use it like your old transistor radio in a way. Uh, you don't have to go to any particular Apple website to listen to your favorite FM station. And the other thing it's got too is a voice assistance button. So that just means that you've got um, you know, better control and better access to uh, the various levels in the phone. So um, yeah, in short, who can use the phone? Pretty much anyone. Um, there's all sorts of things that people like about the phone. Some are gonna be pertinent to you and some not. Um, but just a matter of uh, like we do with all of our phones anyway, uh, choosing what we want to do with our phone and um, and then the blind shell uh, hopefully will do that for you. So uh, what I'll do now is pass over to uh, Mike, uh, Mike Palmer, and uh, he'll go through a full description of the phone for you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Um, so I'll, I wanted to sort of go over, I guess, um, all the various parts of it, just to give you an overview of, of, of what they are and a bit of an understanding of it. And I guess like Rob, what Rob was saying, the key part of it is that the um, the main screen on the device is not a touch screen at all. It, it's working off all these tactile buttons and the tactile buttons do feel significantly different when we're, when we're selecting them. Um, it's, a, it's a very easy feel, even for someone like me, I play the guitar and, and my fingers, I've lost the feeling on the end of them and I can still feel these quite nicely so it's quite good the buttons the number buttons are like the the older style um, you might remember when we used to text where we'd press to the, the number two a couple of times to get a b or c um, our number five has the the tactile lump on it for cent centration so you know where you are on the on the keypad um, so a nice overall tactile display on the side of the device we've got our volume on the other side we've got an interesting button this button has two two uses um, if I I can press it to quickly come to apps that are pre-programmed into it so if there's a particular app that I use all the time I, I can use that 
or if I press and hold it, it's the, the button that I can use to get it to listen to me. So I can either um, re, I can, I can tell it what I want to put in a text message or I can have it open up apps and do other things. So that's that button on there. And I'll go into that a little bit later on. On the back of the device, it does actually have a camera and a flash and it's got this unique button, which is fantastic. This is the, the button that we, when we press it, it it's good for emergencies or, or phoning that one person that you phone all the time, um, which is typically that, that emergency button as well. So I can just press that and it direct dials to that. So it's quite fast. On the top of the device, we've got the flashlight and a physical headphone jack as well. The physical headphone jack has two uses. Um, it's of course, for plugging in your headphones, but for when you're using the FM radio that's built into it, that your headphone then becomes the aerial for the FM radio. Um, it, it does have Bluetooth, of course, so you can Bluetooth headphones, but you wouldn't be able to use your Bluetooth headphones for for the FM radio because it does require that aerial to be part of it. Um, on the bottom end of it, it's got the, the microphone, our USB-C, and a little lanyard area you can you can put your lanyard onto it the device is designed so that very quickly we can easily install the the cards in it and that this is one of those unique devices that has the ability has two sim cards that you can put into it um, and we were we were playing with this earlier um, weren't we david where we can add another card receive and send phone calls um, from either card. Um, it also has the ability to put in a, a memory card as well. Um, so that's quite a simple, simple little device. Within the box, when you receive it, has all sorts of goodies. It does actually give you a set of headphones, which is fantastic. Um, it gives you your USB cable and a docking station. The docking station is it's fantastic. I've been running this on my desk for charging. And of course you plug in your, your USB cable into the back of it and it can sit on, on your desk. Very easy to do and it fits in there nicely. They do give you some NFC tags. Now the, the device has the ability that um, NFC is a, a, a clever little thing where we can put these little tags on whatever we like, name them, and when we put the phone near it, when we name those tags, that will be said out aloud to us. So it does mean that I can have my my sugar and my my flour in the cupboard, and I can tell which one it is by just by using these tags. So it's quite a level clever little thing. They give you that. Um, of course, they give you the lanyard. It's all very nice. Um, all sorts of instructions and thick books. That's that's great. Um, so that's pretty much everything in the box that that's there. Um, let's get the get it on and let it make some noises for us. Hopefully you can all hear that okay. So a nice big screen. Um, it's got some navigation buttons in the centre here that when I when I press either the top one or the bottom one, it will go up or down through the, the menu. And I'll, we, we describe the menus as a, a circular menu. So there might be five items in that menu. And as we go through it, one, two, three, four, five, then it comes back to the first one again. So it's quite easy to understand what, what, what um, where you are in the menu. Call one of seven. You probably heard it say one of seven. Messages, two of seven. Contacts, three of seven. Applications, four of seven. Settings, five of seven. Manual, six of seven. Now this is one of the unique things that is we find with these phones is that it's got this onboard manu manual. Um, fantastic. I don't know how many times I've lost the books on things or had to try and look them up on the internet. It's, it's, it's built into this thing. So Manual, that, that's gold. Six, turn off the phone. And then of course, turn it off. So by continuing on, it brings me back to where seven. I was. So it's an easy up and down button. 
beside those buttons, there's a, a selection button, um, which is, again, they're tactile. So one's a dot and the other one is, I guess, like a, a slit or a stroke on the side. And they are actually color coded as well. Um, it's red and green to really select where you're going into or the reverse to come out of where, you, where oh, you're going into a, into each menu. So for each thing that I want to this select, two of seven. Contacts. Three I can of select seven. that by pressing on the green button or the dot and that'll select the item. Contacts list. If I want to come, come back out of there, I press the opposite. Contacts. And it's brought Three me backwards seven. out of that menu. So it's a simple concept to be able to use it. 11, 10. The upper buttons on it, they've thought about that as well. So there's a status button. No notifications. One of six. And I can scroll through those. 11, 10. Wednesday. Wi-Fi state. So it's just giving me the status of everything that's connected Disable. and not connected. Four of six. Of course, I can get out of that by pressing the, the little 11, red slip. 10. And on the the other button that's up the top there on the opposite side is the button that repeats what it basically said last time. Because I don't know how often you'll you'll be doing something and someone will talk to you and you forget what it said. 11, 11. So I can press that one again 11, and it comes 11. back into it. Going back to the side button, um, this this function is fantastic in that this is the button that I can open up an app. So for instance, um, actually I was testing this the other day. So here in Australia, we often call a flashlight a torch. The, this thing knows both. So I can get it to open a torch or a flashlight, which is one and the same. And that's just 11, by 11. pressing that button and holding it. I listen after a beep. Torch. Opening flashlight. Flashlight on. And you might actually hear it's making some noises so that it, I'm aware that it's actually on. I'll press my red button to get out of there. 11, 12. Actually, Mike, that's really important because sometimes my, my boys will say to me, Dad, will you stop shining the light in my eyes? Yeah. And I like that audio beep because it really does warn you that you've turned the flashlight <laughs> on. So it might seem minuscule. But I find it's really important as a completely blind person as well. It, it's, a, it's a clever function. Um, mm. the, and that, I, I guess that's a, the important note with this. It's, it's the, I think it's the only phone on the market that's been built from the ground up, especially for low vision and blindness. Um, all the other phones are, are, are a, 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 a standard phone that's been adapted. And, and hence why this has got really the, the tactile buttons and everything that it's voicing. It's very clear and easy to understand it. Um, and from the perspective that that the simplicity of it is gold, not just for those that are, are, are got low vision or blindness. Um, I showed my mum this device and she wants one. Um, she wants one because it, it works, it's simple and it, it gives her everything that she needs. Um, her current phone doesn't have a flashlight. So, <laughs> so you know, and that's the thing that the, the People like my mum, they love that sort of that function. Um, the, the the possibility of dictating to the, the phone by using that same button is is gold as well. Um, and I have found that I've taken it to, to out, out to see some people, and even those with some accents, um, it's been quite good. Others may have sometimes had to adjust certain words. Um, for the dictation, but it, it, the dictation date is actually quite good on it. Um, to be able to make a phone call like your smartphone, you, you can you can do the things that you used to there in that you can hold the button and you can tell it to call someone. Um, I yes, it does work. Um, within a, it has a lot of apps built into it um, that also are helpful for those with low vision. So it's got a magnifier built into it, utilizing the camera on the back. Um, and it does have the ability for text, texting, we can text through through talking to it as well. Um, let's have a go at that one and see how we go. I listen after a beep. 
messages. Eleven fifteen. Oh, I did the wrong one. Call messages two of seven. Write SMS to contact Michael Palmer. One of three. There we go. Text. This is a test message. This is a test message. So it repeats it back to me and then of course I can send it off. Um, the device also will connect to my Wi-Fi. It has the Bluetooth built into it as well. Um, for those that need it. It has the ability to re read the text back to me in the message, go back to the through the words one letter at a time. A -S you might hear it going back through there. So I can correct it. Um, nice big screen to use it. So overall, it's, it's quite a nice, simple device. Some of the apps that are built e into it, I'm just going to... Deleted give you a bit of an Deleted. idea of some of the right apps that's available in it. Two of seven. So just by scrolling Contacts, through it. Applications, four of seven. Internet browser, Actually, while you do that, Michael, I'll answer the question on uh, the webinar. Yes, you can mm. turn off, well, you can't turn off the speech, but you can turn it down to zero um, so you don't hear the speech talking. And if you've got your phone on vibrate, the phone will still vibrate when you get an incoming call. But I leave my, we discovered the other day having a chat that that volumes the overall volume for the phone. So if you turn your volume down to get rid of the speech, I think we discovered that also turns the ringtone volume down as well. Yes. Yeah. It's all, all output, um, mm. yep. which is generally where we want it, I guess. Mm. Internet browser. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the things that's available. Calculator, calendar, flashlight, minute timer, notes, stopwatch, unit converter, voice recorder, weather, 10 of 10, alarm, 1 of 10. So got a lot of... 2 of 9, communications, 3 of 9, media, 4 of 9, books, 5 of 9, games, 6 of 9, vision aids, Seven of nine, be my eyes. One of eight, beepers. Two of eight. Beepers is quite a, a clever Color thing. Indicator. Um, Three of eight. There is actually some tags that we that, that's available for it, and you can put those tags onto your your handbag, your keys, for your house, things like that. And um, of course, you can get it to to beep whenever you like so that you can find your keys. Very handy. Um, if you're someone like me, I'm always losing my keys. Color indicator, three of eight. Google Lookout, four of eight. Localization, five of eight. Magnifying glass, six of eight. So it even has its own. Jet tagging, seven of eight. So that's where we are using the NFC tagging is the tagging. We would put these little stickers on, on items to identify them. And we put a voice tag onto that for you. QR object tagging, eight of eight. Um, they also have a QR code that's available that you can print out for sticking on things. Be my eyes, one of eight. Vision aids, seven of hobby, eight of nine. Hobby. Now this is this is quite interesting. Guitar tuner. Guitar one tuner. Two. So you can get a guitar tuner for people. Um, Metronome. Metronomes. Two two. So it has a lot of items that you wouldn't see in any of the other phones, which is which is pretty cool. Me, as a guitar player, I've played with that extensively. So it's, it's, it's and it works really, really nicely. It's easy to use. Guitar tuner, hobby, eight of nine, app catalog, nine of nine. And the app catalog. So they, they're consistently bringing out new, new apps that um, become available. And I've noticed with having this on for the last few days that as new things are, done it does let me know when we get our new apps available or if there's an update um if there's an update with the software i've had it set so that it automatically is updated for me yeah and and, and that's a good point mike because like the question that this person just asked 
you know, it doesn't at the moment do anything to do with vaccination information or anything else. But this phone's all, each function or feature gets added by an app. So when I first got mine back in November, I think there was 31 apps. Now there's about 45, 47 now. Yeah. So as things come on board, they, they add them. So whilst it might not do it yet, this thing is going to be keep continually updated into the future. There's no question that, you know, one day there'll probably be the feature that you want to be on the phone. Yeah, and, and the the good thing with those too that they the apps that they're putting in here are those that are going to be useful for those with vision impairment. That um, you know we, we we often get these apps and we think they're going to be great, and then if we try to use them in in something like this, they don't always work. So they they carefully select their apps that they're going to put in there to make sure that they they're functionally exactly what we need. Um, yeah, and, the, and and the way they do them is actually quite clever. So if I if I go into the web browser, for example, and I want to navigate by headings or links, what they actually do is the number pad changes to what you want to navigate by. So if I go to say the ABC website and I choose and I press number two, that puts me in heading mode. So then when I press up and down arrow. I'm moving forward, up and back, up and down by headings. If I want to navigate line by line, I press one again. That puts me back in line by line mode. Then pressing up or down goes by that particular item. So what they've done is all the numbers on the keypad are to do with controls, links, headers, etc. And then you just choose your up and down to navigate what you want to do. So pretty straightforward once you get used to it. Yeah, actually, I... I I wasn't aware of the the one and two changing it for the. I haven't gone into the um, using it in the web browser in in depth like that. So that's good to know. Mm. Uh, and yeah, we're getting a few questions in the in the chat, but we we mostly get those, to those at the end. Somebody had asked about can you get extra NFC tags, and yet yeah, we, we, yes, we can. And Mike was going to mention the accessories at the end. Yeah, um, definitely. Sure. So, yep. Yeah. So. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Otherwise, yeah, as far as the apps are concerned, there's a lot of, you know, it's got WhatsApp and things like that built into it. Um, and as David was saying, the, 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 up, the updates are coming through all the time. Um, and it's, it's quite, I, I find it's quite exciting. I got, there was a new one that came through the other day and I'm like a kid, you know, in a lolly shop wanting to know all about the new apps and get in there and have a play with it um, and, and to see how they actually work, so. Mm. That, nice. um, that step counter is absolutely amazing. I mean, that's what I wanted on the phone. I thought, come on, guys, I want to count my steps. I don't want to <laughs> keep going to my Apple Watch all the time. And it, it works. It's lovely. So, um, yeah, I've, as soon as they came out, I thought, all right, I've just, I dragged my wife out and I said, we've got to go for a 5K walk now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'd want to hear that too. They'd want to know that. <laughs> absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess that's a, a good overview of, um, of of some of the features of the phone. Um, but in, yeah, I guess in summary, that like what Rob was saying, that it's 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 fantastic for everyone. It's a I, I think I heard someone describe it. It might have been you, David. I'm not sure what someone described described the phone as. It's it's almost a in between the the basic phones and a and a smartphone. It's a good hybrid phone. Definitely. Um, yep. Because it. it, it it has the features of both phones all in one. Um, exactly. So it's a nice, simple device. Yeah. So I think that's that's the overview of it. Okay. So thanks, Michael. So we, um, Mike, we might now hand over to David for um, a bit more of a um, talk about some of the features and also comparing with. Um, Mm -hmm. other things that are on the market so sure. over to you yep. david you thank you yep. um so with the with the phone and it, it's the fact that and like mike said it's in between a, a a feature phone and a smartphone so it does all the basic things i can remember when i first did all my demos of the um the iphone back in 2009 i didn't do a telephone call demo until the 29th podcast so this one definitely makes phone calls. Um, the thing I like about the moment too, I've also got this thing on a lanyard around my neck. So it just hangs around my neck and I, I can just basically carry it around. It's I can also put it in my pocket if I want to. Um, the keypad is really easy to access. So that dot on the five 
is really distinct. The buttons are very well spaced out. The up and down arrows are easy to find. As Mike said, the round button and the slash are easy to find. Um, the notifications button and on the right hand side, the repeat button. So as soon as you touch this phone, you know where you are because half the time when I pick up my Samsung phone or my iPhone, particularly if I'm using it without a case, I sometimes start swiping on the back of the phone because it's also glass and feel like a complete twit because there I am, you know, tapping on the back of the phone and, and nothing's happening. Um, so that's actually really, really good. That works beautifully. Um, I've also, with my, because the phone's got lots of applications, so I did say there's about 45, 47 at the moment. What I've done with my phone is I've added in all my favourite applications to that favourite button. So let me just check how many I've got at the moment. FM radio at 23. So I've got, so 23rd, the 23rd option is actually add a new favourite. So I've got 22 applications at the moment that I use all the time because uh, being a smartphone person I want to sort of like stretch this thing as far as it can go of course so if I just go through wireless quickly internet radio. so the first one was FM radio internet radio and can I say FM radio particularly here in New South Wales because of the floods and then a few years ago because of the fires uh, it's really good to have a thing that does terrestrial normal standard radio stations so as Mike said, you just plug in some headphones and off you go, and that's ultra important to me. Uh, so internet radio is basically just your, your good old internet radio. So, you know, you can get ABC Online, Smooth FM, you know, stuff in Melbourne, wherever you want it to be. You can get it also right around the world if you want. Weather, uh, weather of course, for your local location. VA Connect. VA Connect. Connect. So if you happen to be a Vision Australia Library member, uh, you can log into the Vision Australia Network and Vision Australia, Vision Australia Library and get your podcasts, books, and newspapers. Voice recorder, five of 23. Now, there's two options here. You've got a voice recorder, which sounds what it does. You, you can actually voice record notes and that sort of stuff. And the other thing you might have heard might go across is notes. So I can actually keep notes on this phone as well, and I can just basically voice take, voice dictate my notes. So if I'm out and about and I want to quickly jot a note down, like a reference number, I can go to, to notes. Notes. Alarm. Seven of 23. Alarm's pretty straightforward. That's alarm. Minute timer. Minute Eight timer. Now, that was off-putting when I first heard it because I thought, what do you mean a minute timer? Because I thought, <laughs> I've just got to do one frigging minute here, mate. But no, it's, it's whatever hours and minutes you want to set it to. Um, I, was, I was almost going to email the person. I thought, God, if I, if I email back and go, uh, excuse me, mate, but you just said to what you want to do. Off you go. Stopwatch. Uh, stopwatch. Now, my um, both of my guys and my children are going for their third Dan belts in karate. And we have to time them running around a two-kilometre track. So I'm often using um, the stopwatch to track my boys running around the park in at um, 7 o'clock in the morning. YouTube. Yes, it does have YouTube. Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger. Internet browser, 12 of 23. Why do I have internet browser? Oh, sorry, I've an internet radio. This is an internet browser. So you can, uh, basically what I do is you type in a web address or you dictate it and then it'll sort of go off and do a bit of a search. Then you can add them to your favourites. You can also go into history um, to get back to the website. So when I go into the City Morning Herald, the ABC, Vision Australia, the shop, all that sort of stuff, I can just go to history or just go to my favourites. How do you find Podcast. it? Sorry, David. Yes, Mike. With, with your navigation, you were talking about the navigation of the mm. um, the websites on the phone. Yep. How do you find it generally? Do you've, did it take a little it, while to get used to it? or No, because it reminds me of, because particularly of screen ready users, with, if you're using JAWS or NVDA or VoiceOver on the iPhone or TalkBack on Android or VoiceOver on the Mac, mm. we often will always navigate by headings or links um, or just go up and down our own. because I because the, the initial thing that I thought when I went into that browser I thought if this thing just goes line by line I'm going to strangle it yeah, yeah. and so like you did I thought oh I'll just pop into the menu and have a read and hey presto it said you can navigate the keypad will change to the element you want to navigate by yep. so the first thing that I wanted to do was always press go by heading so I press two up and down and you go by heading by heading 
And then when I get to where I want to read, I just press one for default mode, line by line, and then press down to go line by line. And it works really nicely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's because it's nice and straightforward. You don't have to think. And of course, like in the old computer days or anything else, if you get really annoyed, which I really don't with this phone, you can just press the back button as many times as you like. Or if you hold it in, it'll zip straight back to the main menu screen and you've got out of the web browser. So if you're really irritated, you think this is not working with this website because not all websites are accessible, you can just go back mm. again. How, how does that com compare to, you know, like your, your, your iPhones and things for navigation? Look, totally it's different. Much, it's totally different because when I'm on my, um, here's my brand new toy that I keep talking about all the time. This is my Z Flip 3. Yeah. Um, and look, that's a three-finger flick left and right to um, to change your navigation style, and then it's a one-finger flick, flick up and down. Or on voiceover, it's a two-finger rotate, and then a one-finger flick up and down. <laughs> so you've got to remember the menu. So you, 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 you do. I feel like I've got to actually do a back translation in my brain all the time every time I change, whereas this thing, because everything's built around the up and the down arrow, you really don't have to think about it. So I, I guess that's what I like about it, because it's built around this hierarchy menu structure you just go down arrow press the confirm or the ok on the left to go into it press the back back on the right hand side to go back you really don't have to think about it um, and the other really cool thing is, actually let me demonstrate this to you because this is actually brilliant so I've gone back to my main menu now I've actually got two sim cards in here at the moment um, I've got my work mobile which is Optus, and I've got my Telstra, uh, sorry, my sorry, work phone, which is Optus, and my own phone, which is actually Telstra. So if I press three to dial my, to dial phone, my work... The phone didn't blow up. <laughs> no, it, it didn't. It actually worked. So I'm going to hold in three. Yep. Yep. Sim one, Telstra. So it one says, okay, so I've got Sim one to dial out for Telstra. Press down arrow. Sim two. Optus. Sim 2 for Optus. Now, what I've done with my phone is as soon as you put a second SIM card in it, the phone knows you've got two SIM cards. Mm. And I went into settings on the phone and I told it that rather than defaulting to one SIM card, I wanted to ask me via this little menu about which SIM I want to use. So I'm going to press OK. Dialing. Voicemail access. Now, I'm in a really bad area here on the Central Coast for Optus. So if it doesn't work, it won't surprise me. Oh, Optus worked! Ray. <laughs> okay, but if I hang up, it's going to press the back button. Eleven forty. Now I'm going to press two. Two. Sim one, Telstra. Sim one, one Telstra. Two. Press mm. select. Dialing message bank. Now I'm dialing message bank. And there's Telstra. Mm. So it works really nicely. I and when I get an incoming phone call. Um, you know, even line rings normally. Um, just a, a, a bit of a note that because this is uses a micro SIM, you can just get a, a little adapter to pop your nano SIM into it. So what I did with my both my uh, SIM card out of my out of my Samsung phone and my iPhone, I pop pop them into a micro SIM adapter and just pop them in the phone, and really easy to do. So that was actually very straightforward. The other thing I like about this phone is because it doesn't have a touch screen, um, people don't end up, particularly older folks that are not used to smart technology, um, if you tap on the screen or brush it, you don't end up getting into an app. Because when you think about it, every time you go into a new app on your smartphone, it has a different interface. So not only do you have to learn the phone, the large print program or the screen reader, but you also have to use learn how to use the application. So you, you're learning how to use three things. Mm. Here, you can knock off the middle thing and you're le learning how to use the phone with the application. So you're basically making it a lot easier for yourself. Simplifies and, it. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. And the other thing I love about this one is as a blind person, if anybody's tried to experience using those automated systems where you ring up your bank or whatever else it might be and it says press one for this and two for that, when you're trying to listen to talkback on Samsung or your voiceover on the iPhone while your phone's saying press one and press two and you're trying to find the numbers on the keypad, this one, you can just press one, two, three, 
you know, hash, star, whenever you feel like it. You're there already. And mm. Yeah, and it, it's brilliant. So I will, I don't know what, I don't know what the expression for this is, but I will be an old fashioned person when I did my telephone banking. I'll pick up this phone because it's like, you know what? I know I can do it on my iPhone and I know I can do it on my Samsung phone. But I just want to be a boring, a boring person, and I'm going to do it on a real keypad. Um, and I've had some people contact me on the internet, and even as an iPhone users, uh, they just say there are just some things they prefer to do on the phone because this has got a real keypad, and it just makes some things um, a lot easier. Um, so that works really nicely. The, uh, the The other thing about this phone that's also good is that it works beautifully with bluetooth speakers so if you want to get a bit of extra oomph out of it with bluetooth headsets um, remember you can also use them with the aftershocks so they're the sort of the bone conduction headphones that sit on your cheeks and you can just listen to it mm. um, it works on of course with wi-fi network as as mike mentioned but look it's 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 such a basic good phone and what i should also probably mention is the apps that we're talking about they're specially written apps to make the use of the phone very straightforward so again that up and down arrow the okay to select in the back button to go back so whilst you can use like say google google lookout to do text-to-speech reading or object recognition around you um, or you can use audible for the audible.com books they're still kept to that very straightforward so at the moment no you can't access you know, your Google Play apps because this phone really read down in the firmware. If you want to be a bit techy about it, it's based on Android. But the whole phone from the ground up has been built for blind or low vision access and that's what makes it straight so straightforward. Um, and like Mike mentioned, I've had a few people, um, you know, my chiropractor, my physio, my exercise trainer saying, um, where can I get this phone? Because my dad hates his smartphone because of the touch screen when the damn thing rings you can't work out how to answer it um whereas this one you just press the okay button to answer and you press the slash button to hang up it's extremely straightforward simple isn't it yeah and another nice thing is when it starts up like when you turn it off and you hold the back button to start it up guess what it does it vibrates so rather than me standing there with my iphone and going are you turned on yet um and waiting 70 seconds and going no it's not this thing will actually vibrate when you turn it on. It'll then play a little jingle, jingle sound at about 25 seconds. After that, it'll start talking. But that just initial, hi, I'm here, I'm doing something, even though it only sounds like 25 seconds when it starts up, you know the phone has started up. So to me, that's a, a really cool thing. Um, the voice dictation, I must say, works extremely nicely. So when I'm, you know, when I'm voice dictating on my iPhone or my Samsung, you know, that's all well and good. But this thing, the one thing I like about this one is when you're voice dictating, the phone vibrates as it's doing the voice dictation. So you know that it's actually getting the information into the phone. It's quite tactile, isn't it? You, you're aware of what's yeah. happening. It is because then you don't then you don't stop and you go, well, where are you? What have you done? Um so you know, overall, it's just it's just a nice, straightforward phone to use. Yes, it doesn't do as many things as I want my Samsung and my iPhone to do, but you know what? Those twenty-two apps that I've got on my mother blind shelf, they're similar to the twenty-two apps that I use on my iPhone all the time. So things like Notes, which is Notes on the iPhone or Samsung Voice Recorder. Um, the weather, contacts, messages, uh, calls, <clears throat> they're all things that I use on my phone anyway. So when you do a sort of bit of a comparison about what this phone does versus a smartphone, this will do all that sort of stuff. And, you know, looking a bit at the future, I'm looking forward to, you know, when the phone, they, they add more apps. So, you know, it does have a bit of a GPS in it at the moment. That's how it knows where you are. But it's got a barometer in it, a barometer, it's got an accelerometer, it's got all these really cool features that are just waiting for apps to be written for it. So that's sort of a, a bit of a more of a, I guess, a bit of a more of a delve dive into the, fe the features. Mm -hmm. And just as, I guess, an overall comparison between, you know, Samsung, Apple, and uh, the blind shell. The thing that um, I've, I've found with it too is that a lot of the people that I go out to see 
uh, people that are new to vision impairment. So they've they've not um, over a long period of time they don't have the skill level like what you have. You've got your high high skill level for smartphones and things like that. And these people that have find themselves in this situation all of a sudden are chucked in the deep end where they've they've got to learn to 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 use these devices quickly. And exactly. And with this device. Like I said, my my mum loves it, and she's not a techie. She she knows nothing about this sort of stuff. So often, when we do go and show people these phones, yeah. we end up sometimes with orders for two people because both husband and wife want want one because of their it, simplicity. You know? Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. I'm looking, you know, on my Samsung phone in particular, if I say to people, "Look, you can try and find the navigation button down the bottom and double tap the back button." Or if you want to be really high tech, you can do a down. You can do a down flick and to the left, which is a back to front L to go back. Whereas your, compared to the blind out. phone, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's right. And <laughs> tap your heels to go over and spin around three times with the Kansas, or you just press the back button to go back out of an application. So, and look, I, I guess the other thing is just because the interface is so simple, does not mean the applications are power are not powerful. So. You know, I can still access my Gmail account. I can still access my, my work email, um, not my work email, my work web address. I think at the moment, Mike, it doesn't do Outlook, um, but it does anything with a sort of like an IMAP email thing. So it does all, it does do all that. Yep. Um, you know, and me being a Twitter thing, I'm waiting for them to have, a you know, a, a Twitter client and that sort of stuff. But at the moment, um, I'm more than happy to just use the features in the phone. Yeah. 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 Well, that's Wonderful. great. Yeah, thanks, David. And uh, so, Mike, did you want to just go through the accessories that it? Yeah, I I realise I don't actually have a case. Rob, do you have a case? There is a, uh -huh. a red, red red case available. Um, and something that I probably didn't mention too with the with the phone, they're available in two colours. Um, mm. And Rob's Rob's holding up a red red case at the moment that does actually just, match the uh, red phone. Um, that's faster. I'll, I'll just oh, spotlight the, 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 there the, we go. There's, it there's matches the it perfectly. But I don't know how how often I, I see this when I do visit people, those with low vision, that everybody's phone is black and you put it down, you can't see it across the room. Um, and and even if, if they are asking their friends to help them find their phone, a, a bright red phone and a bright red case is perfect. So it's a... It's a good protective yeah, case and it's also a good contrast, isn't it, Mike, between the black keys and the red and the white characters on the keys yes. itself? It really Definitely. makes it pop out quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, that contrast is brilliant. But yes, it is available in plain black um, for those that are, want to be incognito. Mm -hmm. um, the the stand I find is brilliant. I've I've actually been using mine here like a radio on my desk because I have the um, digital radio playing on it. And it sits in the the stand on my desk while it's charging, but it just I, I use it like a radio, so it's it, the stand's actually very handy, um, and and it, it's just simple for charging. You know, you don't have to stuff around trying to find where to plug it in or anything like that. So no, I can you say well. stand? Do you mean the the charge the charger the charge, charge stand, stand or a stand? Yes, stand? it's a charge stand, so it sits on your the top of your desk, mm -hmm. um, in the, the the base of the stand itself that meets with the plug on the bottom of the phone. Oh, okay. So yep. your phone sits in it upright. Yeah. Um, and then on the back of the stand itself, that you can plug in your USB-C cable okay. to go to the wall. Um, so quite a, quite a good feature. Um, yep. Like we went through before with the, they, they do give you a, a good set of headphones, um, which I was a little bit surprised at. The, the sound quality is actually quite, quite nice. Um, but like I mentioned, you do need that for the FM radio, um, yep. the lanyard. They give you, they do. I think someone asked about the tags. They give you a couple of tags, but they are available as well. We've got those. Um, I think in packs of ten. Ten, yeah. Mm. So it's about twenty nine dollars for a pack of yep. ten. So yeah. Um, um, there's there is the beep as well. Have you got one of those there? I've got one. One on my keychain here. Ah, there we go. <laughs> there's, there's one we prepared yeah. earlier. <laughs> I need one of those on my keys. <laughs> I'm not sure what the the range is on that. I think it's probably ten, I think twenty meters, or something. Ten, ten meters, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 So, so you go into beepers when you've stored it, and uh, yeah, it's hmm. so handy. <laughs> and if you can find your keys, 
mm. or whatever else. It's really funny at the moment because I've got I've got an Apple Air tag for my iPhone, a Tile tag for my <laughs> Samsung, and now I've got a beeper tag on my key ring for my yeah. blind shell. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, so that was that was all the the accessories. Bruce, I think. Yeah. Okay. Can I just make a, a, two, a point quickly about the, the the lanyard? It just goes through the hole on the side of the the case on the bottom of the phone. What I would suggest, I mean, I did this myself, but what I did was I got a um, just a paper clip and just bent the paper clip so I had a bit of a, a prong and I got the, the, the tip of the lanyard in that hole and I just pushed it through and I sort of had it done in, the, in about a minute or so. But if you get really stuck, just if you're a blind person, if, if you don't want to get too fiddly, just ask a, you know, a wonderful sighted person uh, to do it for you. But um, I do like the lanyard because at the moment what, I, what I'm wearing around, I just got it this around my neck and then I've usually got my, my other phones if I'm testing stuff in my pocket. So having it around your neck actually works really nicely. Right. That's great. Thanks, David. Just um, one thing, if I may, about the, uh, the little docking station that uh, Mike was showing you before. Uh, when the phone is actually in its case, uh, it doesn't actually, the docking station won't work. Um, it, they had mm. to make it for uh, either in the case or out of the case, and they chose out of the case. So um, don't expect mm. it to work with that. Um, and another point about the, the lanyard is really hard to see here on the on the uh, picture, but um, the little spot where it goes, um, you would need if you wanted it to use use it with the um, with the case. When you're using the case, uh, you'd have to thread it through uh, the case as well. Um, mm. What you might do is get a little inventive and, and cut that little corner mm. off uh, the case. Uh, it certainly wouldn't. Uh, cause any issue as far as the uh, case still protecting the phone uh, just means that the lanyard would actually have better access to uh, to the holes and you could take it in and out of the case if you wanted to. Or, or get a also den the... dental surgeon to fit it for you. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and plus <laughs> you can also put it in the, the um, charging case as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and you can also put the, the when you've got the lanyard on the phone, that also goes on the little the docking station as well. It'll fit on the yes. Yep. And the USB plug, so that works as well. Yep. yep. Okay, well, that's great. Um, I'll just share my screen again briefly. Um, so. I think um, someone asked about the price, didn't they? Yeah, so I was just going to get... Um, yeah, we'll go over to questions um, now. So we've got quite a few on the chat. Some of them might have been answered already. Um I'll go in order. So um, someone's asked, asked how to store contact data to the phone. Is it by voice or typing? Now, I think it's just typing or if you've got them on your SIM card or... Yeah, well, you can actually sort of... Isn't there? Yeah, you can also voice dictate, can. can't you? Yeah, any field that's um, where you would not traditionally type, you can press and hold that side, but side mm. button and dictate it to it. So you don't have to oh, type anything. Oh, you can that. Yeah. yeah, okay. In any of the fields. Fields, okay. Um... Oh, we talked about this. I think, yeah, can you turn the voice off on the phone? But, um, yeah, we talked about that and the vaccine data. Um, yeah, browsing the web. Yeah, so, again, like in terms of the apps, they've just got an app catalogue there and the list of apps, and you simply press confirm um, to do it. So you can't put – if the, if it's not in the app catalogue, you can't put it on there. But if there's particular requests that – Lots of people. Yeah, think, I, mean, we can I, I guess you've got to size, think of it like yeah. um, the apps and everything that's available. It's like like the iPhone where they lock down what apps are available for it yeah. um, for, for obvious reasons. And it's the same with this to make sure that all the apps are functional and they work perfectly. Yeah. They yeah. lock it down to, to those particular apps. Yep. And uh, yeah, we are sending the recording around. So if people have missed bits, I think someone said. Can we get a replay? So we will send that around. Um, the price of the phone, yeah, it's seven ninety, which Robert put in the chat. Um, I think the case is forty nine dollars from memory. Yep. Um, as is the beat. Um, mm. Can I can I say you can also get over a hundred? I think it's about one hundred and one. I think different types of ringtones, oh, and, okay. <laughs> and about a hundred or so different alarms. So. Wow. I've gone okay. back to the so my ring on my one's like an old fashioned telephone, but then my alarm alarm and my reminder notifications 
I like the old digital watch. So when my when a, the notification goes off, my wife often goes, "Have you got that blasted phone on again with your uh-huh. digital alarm?" <laughs> this goes beep 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 beep, and I thought, "Oh, yeah. that feels like so much like memory." So it actually works really nicely. Can I also say um, you can also, of course, put this thing in different profiles. So with the hash button on the side, if you hold it down, you can put it into um, you know airplane mode, silent mode, ring and vibrations or vibrations. And then if the phone's in your pocket and you don't want the keys to activate, you hold down the side, the, the star button for three seconds, it locks the phone. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever you need to do. And then when you want to unlock it again, um, you just press the star button again and it unlocks it. And of course, if it's locked and you get an incoming call, the confirm button, the round one and the slash button will still operate. Yeah, oh, great. Um, yeah, people had asked, are we a registered NDIS provider? And uh, yes, we are. Um, obviously, it depend on planning, and you don't need to talk to your planners or and whatnot as to whether it's you know um, it's still under the reasonable and necessary criteria, and whether it's right for you and all that sort of thing. So um, we're not involved in the decisions on that, but we can show you the phone and go okay, from there. Yeah, um, I think it's also a positive thing too because this is a custom phone. This is not like a mainstream. Yeah. iPhone or Samsung phone. This is a, so a, a custom phone built from the ground yeah. up as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's be, I mean, yeah, case by case basis, I guess. Um, is there a, oh, so he's asked if there's a discount for pensioners and seniors and DVA, it's, you'd have to put in a prior approval thing. It's not on our DVA contract. Um, I don't know if they normally do phones, but um, we don't have particular discounts for. The seniors, unfortunately. So, um, uh, talks about the apps. Oh, yeah. how secure is personal information stored on the phone? I guess as secure really as any other phone. It. I think it's very similar to like the iPhone in that because it yeah. is locked down. Those apps, it's not doesn't have the access like some mm. of the um, the other products, the more open products yep. do. In the way of um, um, you know, like Google. And, no, no, it's a pretty, yeah, no, it's a pretty, it's pretty much locked down. There's not, mm. not much you can do to try and hack the phone at all. Um, and I should say at the moment, I believe it doesn't currently support hearing aids, but it will um, oh, right. yep. in the future. And it also doesn't support refreshable braille displays at the moment because I think when they released it, they just wanted to get the main features out for the further, for the update. Um, but again, you know, it supports Bluetooth, so there's no reason why in the future if they got enough requests for it, why it couldn't support um, refreshable um, braille either. Yeah. Mm. Um, and we had had one about, I think you mentioned this, David, but is that OCR for reading letters, um, labels yep, or barcodes? That's, Google, that's the Google, Google Lookout, Lookout app, and it works work beautifully because I've got a coffee machine that I don't know where it's on or not half the time by just having to press the, if I press the on button and it turns off, it makes a different sound. If I press the on button and it turns it on, it makes a different sound. But with my Google Lookout, I can just point the, the blind shell at my coffee machine. It says, device with LCD screen, text, text, and then it reads out the, the screen if it's on. So that comes in quite okay. handy. Yeah. yeah that's good. good. Um, and, and we talked about how to select items. Uh, um, oh, can you, if you're on the browser, is there a way of adding favorite websites? You, you can definitely um, pick your favorite Internet you can add, you can add favourites. Yeah. You also you yeah, can also you can go through your that. history. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh yeah. We ha- somebody asked about updates. There have already been some software updates. And oh, can you use it as a hotspot? I'm not sure about no. that. No. 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 Oh, no. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, and some people said, "Is it?" Yeah. We talked about the simplicity of using it. It would depend on people's abilities. But yeah, yeah. somebody asked if a 90 plus lady can use it. But yeah, um, no reason. Why not really? It's no, and like Rob said, based, this yeah. this thing's very straightforward. I mean, sometimes I mean, I sometimes you know, it's like the difference between me using my coffee machine versus using my the kettle with God forbid instant coffee. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I can I can do both if I choose to. But um, yeah. one's a lot less complicated uh, using a smartphone than the other one is. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Robert answered a couple on the Q and A um, about using it in New Zealand. I don't know if anyone else is on the line, but we're not sure of the networks that it works with. But the FM radio should 
work and it does work. Yeah, well, the FM um, radio in it is literally a, a receiver, so you just mm. dial in um, to whatever channel is available. Um, as far as it working in New Zealand, uh, we sold a few over there and haven't had any uh, calls saying that they, people <laughs> they couldn't get into work. their work or a carrier. Uh, so yeah. um, I assume silence is, is good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, and yeah, somebody said about the um, reading QR codes, and it again, it doesn't as yet, but that's due in an, in an update at some point in the future. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, QR codes are, are right. certainly um, there, um, or oh, will be uh, coming, whether the individual apps for various states and territories in Australia for uh, COVID screening, um, whether they're going to be available or not, um, we don't know. But as a QR code reader, yes, that will turn up at some stage. Okay. Um, yeah, someone's got a few questions about the buttons. The, the red and green um, buttons, so the, the green round one is the okay, same as an OK and select button, and the red slash or um, it diagonal sort of bar is uh, your back and uh, hang up and and things, uh, I think David mentioned, there's lots of ringtones on there. And the menu, um, you're basically in them, just using the up and down arrows that gets you through the, if you're on the main screen. As and one thing I we didn't arrow, actually you show you, yeah, did you is if I just go back to the main menu. You so you back at the main menu. Yeah, yeah, I can start, yeah, there we so go. Yeah. at the main menu, I can start typing. So if I do. Number one, oh, yes. two, three, four. So that's, how, that's if you want to dial manually. That's yeah. how you can do it. Now, if I just press the backspace. Three, two, one. And if I clear it, I'm going back to the, the main menu itself. So if you want to just use the phone to dial manually, you can just do it when you're at the home screen. Or, of course, you can just go through the call app and do it that way as well. Yeah. Oh, somebody has asked about GPS. There is a localization option, but it's only to tell you where you are and the accuracy is mm. variable. Yep. I guess it's the... <laughs> Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to. So, yeah, you wouldn't although, want to. Although, could I could I say yeah. I've used it on the train? Oh yeah. Just to check where I am roughly, because because it's about like fifty five kilometres from where I am into the Sydney into the CBD and Central. Yep. I sometimes have used it just to check where I am roughly. You know, basically because it tells you what basically postcode and cancel over you're in, and that actually doesn't work too bad actually. Yeah. Um, and I think we talked about email. Yeah, you can. There is an email. App. Mm -hmm. In there so you, you just have to put in your account yep. details i've not played with that but you said you've got your gmail on there yep uh, yep so yeah so it's got all your, your main things like that on there so yeah okay well thanks everybody i think we've covered all the all the questions so oh i'll just put up our if anybody does want some more information um oh let me just share that i want to know um when i can get a coffee from david <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if anybody does want some more information there is things on our website quantumrlv.com.au or just call us 1300-883-853 and info at quantumrlv.com.au and i know we had some people on from the us so i mean we are only a yeah, new zealand and australia uh, supplier but i believe it is available in the u.s as well so um yeah Thank yeah and I'm, i've been asked to do some uh, videos on basically everything you can think about to do off the phone so you know putting in the battery when you first get it putting in a sim card going through settings customizing the phone adding a contact so hopefully starting next week um that'll be starting so if you check out the, the shop.visionaustralia.org website, um, then you'll see my little videos, videos being done as they come online. Oh, great. Thanks. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Oh, somebody has actually raised their hand. I don't know. Um, they wanted to speak. Sorry, Andrew, I'll just uh, see if I can let you speak here. If you had a question. Um, Okay, you should be able to talk now, uh, Andrew, if you had a question. Yeah? Yes, yeah. 
Uh, look, I'm from Brisbane. Just to, this first time ever on a, a Zoom call, um, vision impaired. Just curious, um, where are these um, phones um, available? Are they um, available in Brisbane through Quantum or are they done by mail order? Oh, no. Um, we do have an office in uh, Brisbane, in Spring Hill. So, yep. Yeah, um, I know where the office is. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. you probably need to call before going because um, yep. there's not always someone there. But yeah, that's they, right. They, yep. I believe they've got it there. If, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. No worries. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just to answer that a little more fully, Andrew, uh, you shouldn't be able to see it there, um, but yep. our stock is held here in the head office in Sydney. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Yeah. Good point. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay. Well, if that's. Uh, there was somebody yeah. else that uh, had their hand raised. Oh, okay. Yep. Let me have a look. Uh, or there's someone that's in as blind innovator. Oh. Did you have a question? Oh. There was a question about Perth too, um, Rebecca. Where does it? Oh, what's that? Ever get a hold of the phone in Perth? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Perth, they're available from uh, uh, Vision Australia. They're available also through Visibility. And, um, yeah, you can always uh, purchase one off our, our web shop if you like as well. Um, okay, we've got a Tina who's raised their hand as well. So, Tina, did you want to speak? I've just unmuted you. I've unfortunately got to go because I've okay. got another webinar in about 15 minutes. Okay, no worries, David. Well, thank you. So, uh, so thanks, thanks, guys. That was fantastic. And uh, I hope people got a lot out of it. So I shall quietly log off. Yeah, no thanks, problem. Okay. okay. Thanks, thanks lot, everybody. Yeah. I'll just try. Tina, were you wanting to talk? No. Okay. Check if there's anything else in the chat. Thanks. Uh, okay, people from King. Um, yeah. All over the place. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well. I think that's Paul. Yeah. No worries. Okay, well, thank you everybody for logging on, and we will get the uh, recording out as soon as possible. So hopefully within a, around a week. So if not before. So um, talk to you all soon. <laughs>